Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, 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 I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. I mean, threads, you name it, we're on it. But definitely, if you want to see our our visuals, you definitely go to our YouTube channel. But you have to. When I mean you have to, I mean you have to go ahead and sign up for our memberships. Because that's where you see all our exclusive content way ahead of time all our full length interviews stuff that we're not putting out for everybody to see if you want to see before anybody else just go ahead and sign up it don't even cost that much just let you let y'all <laughs> know that okay thank me later man hey man listen man the guy we got here today y'all um you y'all if y'all watch boss talk 101 y'all already see the posters and stuff at my store i've been supporting these whole this whole death row movement the old one oh, not wow. the new one i don't know the new one yet oh wow i'm still <laughs> serious i'm trying to figure this new trying one to figure out. out oh wow but the old one i'm from the old school <laughs> oh boy man listen man this guy right here man Hey, Danny boy, what I up? ain't mad at you. What up? Stop what up? mad. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> listen, bro, you got so much history in you, bro. Thank you. Like, and I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all, you old cats. I call you old because y'all from the 90s. You was a young old nigga with them niggas over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Old too. <laughs> <laughs> but now, look, you st now you still thriving, man. You Thank look you. good, man. Thank you. Thank it's you It's popping, so man. Like I said, but just to be able to you know, uh, sit down with you here in Chicago. We yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. This is our third time welcome, in Chicago. Welcome, welcome to the city. Doing uh, Boss Talk 101. Yeah. Check it, man. I'm going to let Miss Jamaica, she going she gonna to start this thing off right, uh -oh. man. Let's get yes, to it. Yes, because, you know, he loves the music. He loves all of that. But I like to get to know you as a person. Because um, I, I do love music, especially singers. Mm -hmm. Love it. But um, born and raised here in Chicago, right? Yes. What part? The west side of Chicago, the we call west it the west side, side of Illinois. Really? <laughs> yeah, I do. So what, because a lot of times I hear people talk about the south side. What's the difference between the south side and the west side? Oh man, the way that we, um, the way that we move, I mean, you know what I mean? I guess you have to be from the city. We're all alike, so to say, but like you, you, you kind of know, like if you're from Chicago, it just take a few minutes, just kind of way that we talk, some of us talk. Oh, you talk different. Our dialect. Uh, yeah, really? absolutely, and and just kind of way we act. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Back in the day, South Side was a little more bougie <laughs> than the West Side. West really? Side was known as a like you know the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ah. But uh, you know things so bad. It's 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 all the same now. Okay. So we, I'm from Chicago. Okay. <laughs> Stomp down. Yeah. So were you born and raised with your mom and dad in the household? Yeah, born and raised with my really? mom and dad. Yeah, absolutely. You're blessed. Yes, I am. Because you know how yeah. that is not common. Absolutely. You know that, right? Oh yeah. It's tough. I'm a part yes. of that. We'll talk about that too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, and you, how many siblings? I had seven, um, seven siblings with my mom, mm. and my dad. Uh, she uh, has a daughter, my sister. Uh, Big I lost family. two. Yeah, I lost two sisters back in I think 2010. Wow. So you were yeah. the, the first, second, third. I am the baby. Baby boy. Out of everybody. Boy <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all. Mama's yeah, that's boy. What they say. Yeah, I was. I was a mama's boy. Mama's boy. I was. Okay, so um, how what was it like being a baby with all? Were they were your siblings like your parents to you? Well, I, I guess I guess you can say that. You know what I mean? Coming up in that day, anybody that was kind of older and you know what I mean, kind of mm -hmm. had like that that parent movement with you. They can tell you to go to bed and mm -hmm. get in the house and things like that. All of my sisters and brothers are older older than I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but my mom was pretty sick when I was coming up. Really? So I, I had a lot of uh, adult-like responsibilities. Mm. What was wrong? Do you mind I ask? Uh, absolutely. Um, she suffered uh, seven strokes when she was pregnant with me. And, seven um, strokes? Yeah. Pregnant yeah. with you. But of course yeah. it didn't affect you. you no, it didn't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I never and, heard that before. Yeah, she had seven strokes and it left her with a speech impediment. Mm. And uh, out of all of my siblings and actually out of my mother's siblings, I was the only person to really kind of understand every word. So it was like... Uh, That's uh, crazy. Was like, like a blessing. Oh, absolutely. I was in You understood every word. It, it was nothing she could say that I... Maybe I was just like, oh, what was that? And she'll say it and... Oh, she just said this. That's what you said? Yeah, exactly. So I can see why you were probably so close to her oh, because sure. of that. Yeah. For wow, sure. That's, girl. that's like that's like touching yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, like, that's real. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um 
So you're very protective of her too. I was back then. She was, yeah. yeah. She's still here. No, she passed when I was 16 years old. When you old. were 16. Yeah, she passed. How did that I... affect you? Cause oh my God, what? I was um, such a big effect because you know I think I was in my second year of being around Death Row Records, mm -hmm. and uh, you know when you when you're young, you always dream of the things that you wish to do for your parents. Right. And uh, you know while being there in California recording. Uh, she got sick, but she was suffering um, during this time uh, from heart failure and heart problems. Mm. So she had had uh, triple bypasses and, you know, a few things going on with her heart. Yeah, my, my dad yeah. had a triple bypass yeah. and he lived for some years yeah. till he eventually passed away. Oh, wow. yeah. But did she pass away in her sleep? Cause uh, so she no, she did. actually had a, uh, a heart attack uh, okay. February, the, uh, February the 8th. Mm -hmm. Of ninety five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine died in ninety six. Really? <clears throat> yeah, with cancer. Wow. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's something. And so I you actually, weren't even here when it happened. You were no, in California. No, actually, had to, I had to fly back. Wow. I had to fly back and and uh, come to that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sometimes I, I know some people never get get over that. You oh, know, no. some people mm -hmm. can't understand how to fill that void. Even though you left here to be an example, sometimes people can't figure it out. You but, know what I mean? Right. But because a lot of people <clears throat> tend to in life when we in loss or in anything that we do as human beings, we tend to always look at the negative. We don't ever try to dwell on the positive because with you talking and saying that, the first thing I thought about is that at least she was here to see you get your deal, oh, to absolutely. see where you were going. You know what I, I mean? I, I thank God. Um, I think, uh, uh, well, I'm blessed that he allowed her to see me safe. Right. If that makes sense. Right. Like, you know, to be 16 years old and to be the last of her children mm -hmm. uh, to like it, I guess it probably looked promising to her right you know what I mean uh, okay cool yeah. he's singing um, he's doing something that he want to do and uh, I was able to bless her bless her you know, with a few gifts in the exactly. beginning. She didn't want much. She wanted me to be fine. Just most parents, because yeah. you're a parent yeah. right now. Yeah. And to me, monetarily, things are not, you know, every day I pray for my kids, I always pray that, you know, God just keep them safe and That's keep it. them happy. That's the biggest Whoever thing. comes around them, because they're going to have people coming around them. Oh, yeah. And whether it be false pretenders or people who really mean them good or whatever, yeah. that they're able to discern this with these people and that they can find that happiness and that love yep. that that's the only thing that you can give Absolutely. them you know what I mean yep. that's all you want for your children so, so I'm grateful for that for that time to be put man, in you position know, left mm -hmm. in position You're right. it's, it's, it's just something else man because now you know you, you being a parent you, you there's no book to being a parent oh no so you have to figure it out as you go oh man and it's a it's a journey it's a definite journey it's a journey but I mean, you know, like I said, man. But you look, you look who you are today. Look what yeah. you've done. Mm -hmm. Look yes. how you've accomplished all the things you've accomplished. And I'm you've grateful. sketched history. Well, you wrote books. You've done yeah. things that a lot of guys will never do in their lifetime. You've Absolutely. been with Pac. You've been with uh, Snoop. You've been with Suge. All of the the Dog Pound. Yeah. You've been yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. you met a lot of people outside of that. Jamie Foxx. I, I heard yeah. you. All the yeah. stuff you've done. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's just a blessing to be who you are now and you. to yes, be able to sit down with you and go down through there like this is everything that I do this for. Man, it's amazing to share the journey. <laughs> but I have one more question share. about your, okay, so when she passed away and I said, um, how did it affect you? Um, I'm not always in that moment, but sometimes as you're older now, you can look back and say, oh, that's the reason why I acted out in this way after, you know, so yeah. forth. Did you go through that period? Where oh, abs ab absolutely. Um, I, I don't think that effect never stopped, especially, you know, in, in our community, in the black community. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, uh, we don't know how to grieve. Mm -hmm. um, that's true. We just grieve the best way that we can. Um, if we get an opportunity to grieve. That's true. You know, usually we just deal with the passing of a loved one. Mm -hmm. um, well, we go to the service, the repass, you know, and we, we still cry uh, for, the, for the person that was closer to yeah. the person. We still cry daily. But, you know what I mean, next week you got to get back to work. And uh, I, I think just over the years, um, even as a grown person, it, I, I, I didn't learn until I was about maybe 30 something where I, where I was at least at peace I was at peace at least like well you know she's she's no longer here you know my birthday was the other day yeah. and I can't yeah, say that it was October yeah um, it's a never ending thing cause I was you know I'm celebrating you know I'm hearing everybody say happy birthday to me and the only thing that played in my mind is wow I haven't seen my mother in 30 years yeah mm -hmm. so I think 
you know, it's something you never get over. I can relate. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah. when you're talking about grief, I'm like, is there even a, a proper way to grieve? Yeah. There's no such thing it's, as a it's proper not. way. We do the best way that we can, and right. Uh, and and I guess I guess I say, with our grieving process, we don't, I think, get the attention that's needed. You know what I mean? I think when you lose someone, Ugh. counseling and therapy and group sessions and speaking with other people that has been in that position is is much needed. Yeah, yeah. and but but you hear as an example. Yeah. So Absolutely. so you basically have been through things so you can help others to get through exactly. things. Oh yeah. So exactly. you basically went through what you went through so that you could help others who lose mothers in current time. Oh yeah. Fathers yeah. in current times. Yes. Yeah. That's a part of our journey. Yep. That's what a testimony does. It's Especially able to pull when you put people out of fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. You think about, I, I met a girl at the <clears> airport <throat> and she broke down crying because mm -hmm. she was traveling to see her father. And who I passed at, away? Who passed away traveling to see, to bury him here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And me being able to understand it because I've been through it. I lost mm -hmm. my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. I believe that me helped too. me to be able to talk with her and help her to deal with her issue at this time. At that time, right. You see what I mean? But if I had never done that, I couldn't have yeah. ever talked to her like that. So for mm -hmm. this appointed time, I believe that's why. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. How old were you when you lost your dad? Uh, my dad died in 2011, February the 8th. Okay. Uh, he passed Man. the same day as my mother. Whoa. Um, 18, 19 years later. Same day. Same day. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. That's yeah. a date you'll never forget. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. You have some, you have some <laughs> likes, <laughs> some stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, um, like I said, man, we just blessed to have you on on the show today, man. Boss Talk One Hundred One, man. We've been yeah. around for a couple of years now, and you know, we strive at trying to figure out, like, man, who can we bring on so our people to be able to, you know, feel what we're trying to give them. You right know, on. this whole thing is gonna be playing with me and you long gone. Right. Mm. Yes, you sir. see what I'm saying, and that's yeah. why we do this, bro. Yeah. So yo yo. Your grandkids, yeah. your your <laughs> your great grandkids, yeah. they'll be able to go, be go able back to and say, yeah, "That my granddaddy did that," and that's hard to me. Yeah, I mean, you is. know what I'm saying? I love it, bro. Yeah. So I want to talk about you know some things. You know, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, my favorite song is "I Ain't Mad at You." I, you just took a drink, so <laughs> I sure would like to hear a little bit of that before I can start any question about no any anything I got. So if if your boy, me 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 me, you know, <laughs> get it together and give me some. <laughs> I ain't mad at you, no, no. I ain't mad at you. Man, stop playing. You see what I'm saying? Do you know how I am about the music, oh, man? I love Listen. No, you see, I, I'm an R&B. He's rap. I do all. I, 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 I do it all. Oh, wow, wow, I do it all. Stop playing. Well, I'm an all r and I'm sorry. <laughs> man, you was one of those guys early on that really... When you think back to those times, man, you had Keith Sweat, you had all these different people that was doing R and B, but mm -hmm. you was able to, you know, understand the, the hip hop era and right. come in, blend in. Oh, yeah. Like how how was that, man? Because I know you know you had H Town, you had a bunch of people during that time back yes. then, but you was one that you came in. You know, yeah, you had Nate Dogg, and but you was a true to me R and B singer. Oh, wow, in the Thank mix you. of these guys. And handling your business, wow. so let's wow. talk about that, man. Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm thankful to that to uh, to Suge and uh, to Pop. That's you know what I mean. Like, you know, for, to Suge for signing me to the label at 15. You know, really being the R&B cat around Death Row. You know, outside of you know the guy I should say or the baby R&B mm -hmm. guy because Nate Dogg was there and yeah. Jewel. Um, but being able to do that, being connected to him, and then you know with the with the Pac stuff. You know, him invite me in the studio. I was working on my album. I could be, we had an A and a B studio, and I don't care if I'm in B back there working or A working. Pox is running in the studio while I'm on the mic. Hey, man, come to the front. <laughs> come on, I got something for you this time. Bring your ass on. <laughs> you know, so, you know, just just to, I, I, could, I see those visions now. Wow. You know, as, as a grown man, and to know that he invited me on those records. Let's go back a little bit, boy, though. Like, like, you were actually going to the prison to see or, or to be around the fact that Pac was coming out to oh, be on yes. death row. Well, I, I, wanna, went. I, I wanna talk about that mm -hmm. because to understand that time he was locked up, it's like everybody turned their back on him to yeah. me. It's like yeah. he was just there and nobody couldn't help him. Mm -hmm. you, after all the accusations, he's just stuck. Mm -hmm. So you go down there, what are, what are your thoughts as you go down to the prison? So um, after after my mother passed, or you know, even during the time of my mother being sick, Suge became my legal guardian. 
Okay, and okay. Mm. So almost everywhere, wherever Shook was. You went. You know what I mean? I'm there today or I'll be there tomorrow. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I accompany him on uh, the trips of, of preparing to bring Pac home and the day of bringing Pac home. Uh, I never did get an opportunity to go into the jail. You know, I just remember going across the street. We were a small restaurant across the street and sitting in there and just listening and waiting, you know, watching TV and waiting. And when should get out um, from the visit, he would come to the limo and, you know, this shit going to work. Wow, <laughs> you know he kept saying this, and you know he would say this, you know, for a few months he had been saying it, but and then that last day, you know, Pac got in that car, got in that car, and and what was that ride back like? Were you, you within that car? Oh, when, absolutely. Well, what was that so, like? So, uh, man, you know, you ride with Pac I, again. I, my introduction to hip hop is Snoop Dogg, and you know those guys. Uh, I come up around Crucial Conflict. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's. I, I, maybe that's I should say that's my introduction well, shout out to Wild Style okay okay that's uh, here my, though right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Crucial Conflict from Chicago uh, my cousin Wild Style was the first person to put me in the studio but to, to be able to go there and work around those guys you know what I mean and and you know uh, j just see the atmosphere of what was going on you know and, and Pac getting out, getting out of jail and you know us being in the car and getting on the flight you know, coming back. I think the biggest thing for me is remembering the flight. Pac was just so damn happy, mm -hmm. you know, to, yeah. to be out of jail. To be out, right. You know what I mean? And we had girls and we smoking weed and partying. What's the first the thing you ate? What was the first thing? If you remember. Chicken. I think some, some chicken. chicken. That's I, what I'm, I'm talking about. Yeah, because that's the first thing people uh, always yeah, like. They want free food. He had to put a little weight on yeah. too. He had to put yeah, a little was, bit of weight on. He was short and, you know, he come out, man. <laughs> I don't even think he ate enough, though, because I remember when, when he, we arrived to California, uh, I went to the house, and then we were waiting for Pac to come uh, to the studio, and he got to the studio and got to the back door. And before he got to the door, he just fell flat first. Really? Just fell out. Why? They had, to, they had to wake him up, and he'd get up. And was he, he drunk? Came, or oh, man, I guess he hadn't smoked and drank smoked too much. Smoked and drank, you know, then wow. he fell out. Then he fell right out of the door. Damn, they killed Pac. Wow, damn, y'all bought it if y'all bought it. Pac is gone already, man. <laughs> wow. So. Man, so when you think about, because now Keefe D, oh, we got to talk about that. When you hear that they are rest. Oh, congratulations to him. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Right? Congratulations, I'm proud right. of him. And <laughs> tell me uh, how you felt when you seen them raid his house, and then they say, you know what? Not only we're raiding this house, we re we we opening this case back up. We're arresting him. What was that you know, like? Um, I didn't really follow the case. You know, I had heard that his house had been raided, and that just sounded weird by it being so many years. So many. That's years what I said. Later. You know, that had gone by, but uh, <clears throat> I noticed in the last few years. Um, how famous Keith has made himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I'm so from the book like, congratulations. Everything. You're mm -hmm. an author. No. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. You're doing the interviews. Um and uh congratulations, he's walked his ass into some trouble. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Whether he did it or not. Right, purposely you know I mean? or not. Uh well the whether he was he's the shooter or not, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? What what you know, we know the world that we live in, we know that the way the system go, you know, if the killer is dead or you know, they may give him all of the yeah, that's what I'm stuff saying. that they were supposed to give everybody else that he's talking about. So this congratulations. This dude writes a book like, yeah. about this whole situation, and it's like he's putting it in front of everybody. I don't know who everybody. want to be known for that. That's you know? what I'm saying. But I heard he was sick or something, and he yeah, thought he was going to pass, and he said, I'm going to just let it. Because you, you remember the, 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 the Bob well, you Marley know, guy that said, right. he's going to let it all out. Yeah. So, you know, when you, when you, that's one thing about, you know, the, the, the spirit the Holy Spirit. Come on now. You know, there's one thing about, conviction. you know, God and conviction. You know what I mean? I don't care how long your mouth stay closed. Come on now. You know what I mean? You just, you know what I mean? You could sew your lips up. Mm. And, and if it needs to be shown and it needs to be seen, you know, God is a perfect person to uh, magnify what we think we're exposing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's so, right. So he put it under the light. Nobody was paying attention to him. I think he he got away perfect, mm -hmm. perfectly with the murder. He if was he was a murder. He was away. almost, you know, what he's like ninety years old. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, you know what I mean. So to live his last days, if if they convict him or whatever this plan is to live those days out in jail, if this makes him a little more comfortable, 
Congratulations. So be it, right? Yeah, but I wish him all the come hard. To, he, the thing is that people, pe maybe as like what you're saying, I never thought about it that way. He wanted to make himself right with God before it was time to go, so he had this confession. Well, <laughs> he I don't know if you made himself right with God. I don't know, it, nigga. You took pot. That's right, and that's not good. <laughs> well, you know, I just, I just hope that he's safe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because he talked a lot about you know, you know, different gangs in in, mm -hmm. in Vegas and said how weak they were and yeah, all and of then, the real gang bangers is in L.A. So now he's in an unfamiliar place. Right. You see him sitting up. in the back of the car and he's like, "You don't know who I am." He's telling the guy, "Like you don't like, know damn who I am." He's kind of, you I'm know, what I mean, I think he wanted to be known, especially to be talking like that. I mean, what else would he be known for? That's that's the biggest thing he ever done in his life. Yeah. So besides he, besides gang banging and you know how how. Pretty or cute is it to hear a grown ass man talk about him game banging? Mm. So, wow! I mean, his ending story is being a part of, you know, assassinating or killing Tupac, which is crazy. Which mm. is crazy. crazy, man. You, you, uh, as a young, let's stay in that young boy state, man. You, you, something else. You know, I got to bring the Mary J thing up. I got to bring that mm. up. You know, as Damn. a young dude, because I was clubbing at, at a young age. Yeah, I, I was like eleven and ten and twelve at the club. Man, my so daddy when I heard me your story, lounge. I was clubbing for was clubs. I was lounging. So you really was an old young nigga. I'm an old <laughs> nigga. My daddy was born 1926. So, ooh. you can't tell me shit. My daddy was born ah. December the 25th, 1926. So maybe you took Mary so fast. Yeah, That's so what it was. You, it was you. It, it was me. I was a grown. <laughs> I was a grown man, and it's not. Yeah, so, <laughs> he had an old soul. <laughs> that book, your book, man. When you wrote it and decided Straight to open, on death row, uh, yes. oh yeah, straight on death row. You decided to open up about all of these things. Yeah. When you when you decided to open up about sure. that, you knew it was gonna cause some. It was gonna ruffle. Some I mean, things. you know, some people got mad, but I don't know. Did it really ruffle things? Well, you told your truth. Yeah, that's I mean, all that matters. You know, I mean, people focused on my sexuality, and then uh, becoming gay became famous. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here! I did it too fast. Okay, <laughs> but I want to talk about because back then I said, it wasn't. Wait, I, did, yeah, I came out. I had to fight for this. But mm -hmm. do you think when you were early on, you was messing with Mary? Well, okay, you, know, you were, how did you think about that? that time I wasn't. You know, I mean, I know you know, I kind of was, but it wasn't. That's what I'm saying. How did you think? <laughs> like, what did you feel like? Okay, yeah, I like Mary, or you just was like, was she taking advantage of you? Because you were young. No, nah, I mean, you know, that was Mary she J. She was Blige. young, too. She was young, too, and that was Mary J. Blige. And when I brought that story up, because a lot of people thought that I was, like, trying to me too. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't use her. <laughs> I got somebody I could meet too if I want to, <laughs> but it, it wouldn't be Mary. It you wouldn't know, be I, Mary. I, I, you know, I said it in the conversation of, you know, somebody was just saying how Mary was somebody girl, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, no, what? No, it was my girl. It was my girl, you know right? I mean? And I was kind of just talking too fast and. You know, <laughs> I, didn't I, I didn't mean to say I got fucked. You know, I didn't mean to say it like that, but I did. I mean, you know, um, you know, nothing I said in my book. You know, I'm waiting for whatever I said in my book for the people that. I said it about. I'm waiting for them to come back and be like he's lying. No, uh, you ain't heard that. But did oh, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> what about KC? Like you got kicked off the tour. tour yeah. Was that I concerning? Got kicked, I got kicked Wait a minute. Life. <laughs> was that concerning the fact that you was you know doing things? I, I think you I, was making moves around there. Well, uh, that between that two, I think after after. Uh, it became so big, you know, on the tour bus where everybody, you know, would joke. You know, they'd be, man, I just read the book last week. Oh, damn. You know, Casey's sitting there with his fiance, and, you know, he laughing. <laughs> but he really crying and shit in the inside. Um, and I'm out with him, and I kind of noticed the ag aggression and, you know, how, how he became, you know, it went from, like, we brothers to, you know, when he would say things to us, I'm your boss. Mm. Oh, it didn't change. Nigga, is you crazy? You know my mm. fucking boss? <laughs> fuck you mean I'm singing background and I'm doing a gig this is work for hire boss mean that when I'm not singing for your ass you paying me unemployment well right. I can still depend on you damn and I can't I couldn't you know I, I looked at them as friends mm -hmm. and uh, you know after a while I was fired you was actually singing for Jojo right yeah cause he what, I mean you know I, I you know Jojo's my boy so I you know there's, there's not much that I would I would say, but JoJo and Casey know know what myself and shout out to my boy Showtime at. There was times that we sung for Casey and JoJo. Okay, okay. And you know when they when they wasn't well, we made sure that we had their back. We protected them at all cost. Yeah. Uh, 
and look out for them because we love them. And when they got better or they appeared to be better, you know, they became the old Jodeci. And, wow. you know, the old Jodeci had always been assholes and rock stars and not nice to other people. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's who they became again. You see the trueness in a person when they hit their pinnacle. No, right? man. When them niggas yeah. was drunk and couldn't walk. Yeah, they started telling they the truth. They needed shoulder. But yeah. when, when, when they got sober, you know what I'm saying, and work and shows came in, you know what I mean? Um, I, I got fired. Showtime got fired. And it was at a time that, you know what I mean, it mattered to me yeah. because I had bills. You know what I mean? So at times they, they blessed me to feed me. And it, uh, during that time, I, I was kind of left... You know, on the curb. Wow. But so why, I'm not happy with those guys at all. At all. No. But why does a lot of that um, fame and fortune come with all of that cockiness and all of that? You know, a bunch of bums that never had nothing. I hate to call it like that. But when you never had nothing, you know what I mean? Or never been around anything. That's the only thing that I could I could blame it on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I tell people all the time, I, I, I've been a lot of places. I've, I've seen a lot of money. I've, I've been on private jets. The difference between the jet that you're on now is the jet was probably made in 92 mm -hmm. and I flew mm -hmm. it in 95. Mm -hmm. And you might still be flying on that same damn jet. They got jets that's out there 30 years old still in the air. So yeah. Uh, it's nothing new. And even when you were talking about Mary J, because when I heard the story and stuff like that, and for some reason I even looked, uh, I was on TMZ and I seen where another young lady talk about she um, had sex with Michael B. Jordan and so what. I'm like, is it becoming such a thing? Because me growing up, it was like, you don't talk about certain things. You don't put that out there. Yeah. But it's now it's like everybody's, oh, I slept with this person. I slept with that one, whether it was a man or woman saying it. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, it's just everybody's just putting it out there. Like, Why? Well, you know, uh, again, you know, for me saying it, especially at the point of where I was in my life, you know what I mean? A lot of people knew that, you know, that after the demise of Death Row, you know, I was, I was struggling and, yes. you know, singing backgrounds and things like that. You know, at that point, that was my, uh, that's my trophy. Out. That's to, my trophy. That's right. my, you know what I mean? Talking about, you know, I wish Instagram or. Uh, was around at that time. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't You'd be able to viral. mess with my followers. <laughs> no, at all. My followers would be up there Crazy. for the stuff that I've seen and done. So, you know, when I shared that moment, it was out of sharing some things out of the book. Yeah. Just I, to push it. Yeah, I yeah, absolutely. Push. Not just to push it, just to, you know, I don't, I, I don't tell people to tell all us to share on. Man. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of it, man. Everybody know who Mary J. Blige is. <laughs> you, you talk about when they, after the death row thing, but, you went up to New York, and you yeah. end up dealing with, I guess, Timberland and all of these. Yeah, I went people. up there with uh, Devontae. Devontae. And you basically were a bigger star at that time, right? Being that you just left Death Row or just this big. Well, you I were was, in the room. Well, we were still with Death Row. I was still with Death Row, and Death Row was kind of like really going up, and Genuine album hadn't came out. So I met Genuine and Timberland and Magoo and Missy. Yeah. And Missy was with the group sister, and... You know, she wasn't. You know, all of the acclimates that they have now. Now they didn't. They didn't have. So how did you? How did you guys interact? Was it? Was it cool? Uh, I remember it being cool. I was there to work with with Devonte, and uh, okay. the, the person that I really connected with the most was Genuine. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That's my homie. That's my brother. Genuine, I've been falling off the stage doing a lot of crazy stuff yeah. lately. Yeah. This thing is a meme, a walking yeah. meme, right? Yes. Like, yes. But yes. so, so basically, the, when they took off like they did, and you still, you know, your 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 career was kind of, you know, it wasn't like oh, no. Theirs. When they took, oh hell no. When they so took off, man, that, I was back in Chicago. How did that? When you seen it, you were like, man, you know, uh, Genuine had tanks and backgrounds on. My first single, Slip and Slide. Yeah, Slip and Slide hard. Thank you. And, Man, um, y'all did know, that out the know, country too. Yeah. And and to to that video to yeah to see to see everybody kind of walk in something that I felt was rightfully mine, so to say. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a jealous thing, but that that was times that I was like, "Man, I wish," you know, "I wish I didn't," you know, "have this this short end of a stick." But I don't call it short and stick because y'all was spending some money at Death Row. Oh no, I'm talking about now. I'm, ta I'm talking, I guess, after Death Row. Yeah, you talking after? Oh, but during that time, like <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know, I don't complain or I, I would would never um, n not talk about or forget what Death Row or what shouldn't I done for me. Did, did you ever run into like Timberland and them after all those years, or you never seen them again? Uh, every now and then. I may have seen Timberland and Missy like once or twice, but nobody after everybody make it, you know, they all go into a state of, I don't remember you. Oh yeah. Mm. I mean, games. even after they, you know, you can run into them now and 
you know, and I'm not saying like I'm so grateful, like I ain't mad at you is you know, twenty six, twenty seven years old and people still right. remember. Wow, what? Stop you know, playing. but you know, you can walk in to front one of these people and they'll be like, No, there's Danny what he used to sing and they'll be like they'll be confused and it's like playing games. You know, so I, I just stay out the way of Hollywood. Don't you think that's God shielding you? Yes. <laughs> And shielding them. <laughs> and shielding them. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm made I'm made for this, but I'm not made for Hollywood. That's like, I'm I mean. not with the fake shit. Me neither. You know what I mean? Like, I've probably, you know, telling my truth and speaking how I speak. You know what I mean? Those times people said, oh, man, we don't want to deal with you because you said this. All right, fuck you. Don't, like, wanna, don't care. How you going to be mad at me for talking about, you know, someone that owe me money or my situation? You're a grown man. And you mad over another grown man being mad over his business. Mm -hmm. I, I but have you always been like that? Have you always? That's what I was about yeah, to ask. Have you always been like that? Because, when it's vocal? Yeah, because no, in the beginning. No, Because in the vocal? beginning. You're, you might have been vocal, but they're like, like okay, and, I was, and I'm saying this, like Dwight Howard right now going through his situation. He yeah. ain't able to speak. He's, he's all these innuendos. You yeah, even know what said, that shit, But bro. think about it. You would, you would When you first started well, coming. Well, when it came to my sexuality. You nah, was, I mean, you know, I got baby mamas and kids. And right. There you that's go. That's the only okay, thing. But okay. like, as far as to be worried about what a nigga think, yeah. that, I didn't never hold it because of what, oh, right. what they going to think of. <laughs> because, you know, with politics, you know, with politics. Are nasty. Are nasty. <laughs> you think I'm worried about right. what somebody think about you nasty ass <laughs> nigga? But when I think about politics and you trying to, you know, escalate <laughs> your career, a lot of people tend to hold their tongues because yeah. they don't want to get I'm on nobody's bad. Not me. You know what I mean? <laughs> not me. So you've I'm never not. been like that. No, no. Like I've been in trouble since I was little. Like, like now that I be looking at some of the things that like that you did, that I do now, and now some of the interviews I seen some interviews, I'll be like, man, shut up, don't say that. Like I try to tell myself, but you know, this was stuff that I remember the principal telling me. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't a bad kid, but you wasn't just gonna tell me mm -hmm. some shit. And it, if it ain't real, it ain't right. I'm not finna listen to that. Or if I believe something in my heart, even as a kid, I'm getting a whooping and I'm still saying, I, that's not right. I get it. Whoop my ass on the crowd, that's still wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. So when you talk about the sexuality and how you, you came out and everything like that, and it's so, um, everything is so bold now, especially with um, oh, yeah. everybody, but then why are there still some people in the industry? Dwight Howard. Not just we, no, you, he's you one. can say we him. Say him because, you can well, you say know. him, but not only him. But there's a lot of other people that are um, I, it, people are guessing about, and there's nothing. Well, you know, some people. Why people don't won't come out about it? I, you know, some people kind of take a stance. You know, I've heard people say, you know, they ain't your business, which is cool. That's like, what he said. You know, now, I mean? I'm, I'm thinking about what I heard. I didn't. I, I shared it. You know, out of again, out of social something that happened on social media. I was sneaking around with someone. He committed suicide. Oh, that's, that's and, crazy, and man. Sorry to hear that. At this time, thank you. I was working in a church. Mm. And the stuff that the church people said to me in my comments is what kind of made me mm. come out. And I had to kind of like, yeah. And you know, I came out on social media like, yeah. Rah, 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 like, by the way, this is, you know, yeah. because, you know, people were saying, oh, you know what they say about when you kill yourself, you go to hell. And I'm, wow. Whoa. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell y'all what's happening so I can get your ass in. Then I got them in order, and then I was like, man, you just told on yourself. Wow. But um, it's very uncomfortable in our community. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially for a man. You know, um, we're looked at as l l less of a man. Um, I guess everybody think you want them. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? You become this yeah. monster. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hide your kids, hide your, like, it's the weirdest shit. Uh, a woman, and excuse me, a, you know, a woman could say she like, another woman and it's okay and, and it is okay <laughs> you know mm -hmm. but yeah. we our community is so judgmental mm -hmm. and um you know the, it's, it's so funny that a lot of people I, I feel sorry for Dwight because there's so many people that's locked uh that's locked inside of themselves and living for other people wow. that's what I was just about to ask did you hey, feel a sense money. of freedom yeah oh my did god you I got, feel? my skin changed my cut my tone of my skin I felt like my lights I got a lighter Mm. Like sneaking in hotels and like, okay, you meet me here and I'll meet you there and I'm running and I'm grown out of hard work money that I work for. I've never asked anybody to, can you help me get a room? Or yeah. Can you help me go on a date with all of this shit I'm paying for yeah. when I'm hiding? And in the midst of that, I've lost um, great people mm. that wanted to be dated out loud. 
that wanted people to know that yeah. you know they was with this this guy or awesome guy. I wanted us them to know, and I'm like, no, I can't do this. You know, who who wants to live that kind of life? Did wow. you lose friends or family who feel who said that? Well, I don't agree with. Oh yeah, a lot of people changed on me, uh, and a lot of those relationships, some of those relationships, you know, haven't been rekindled, and the ones is some of them been rekindled, and it ain't the same. Uh, I used to be close to people in the family, and and now it's like I'm I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, but it don't bother me. I, you know, I, I, I'm also grateful to one of my aunts that I always said, consider the resource. And um, I don't, man, you can't judge me because I, like, I will look at your ass and think about seven different things that you should work <laughs> on before you think about me. If your mom was here, what do you think she would have told you? My mama knew, I think. You think she knew? Absolutely. Yeah, my mama knew me. Because even though, although you had baby mama, girlfriends, yeah, all of that, you felt like. She still your mama, knew. your mama know you, your mother know you, and uh, quite frankly, I think my daddy knew. I, you know, he passed before I came out, but my dad, my dad, I think he knew. He mm -hmm. would always say every time he met a girl with me, man, I, man, she pretty, man, I, I thought, I, I thought this boy was gonna be gay. That's what he, That's always what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> he telling me take me in the. I used to take him in the stairs and get him a suit, and the girl try to put his suit on him. He crying. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to see wow, him. that's crazy. He tell every girl, man. Man, I gotta ask you about, uh, man. Just Suge Knight, man. You was with them early. I gotta get back to the music because I, I, mm -hmm. I done skipped over something. You know, when you playing in your plate, you know yeah. it ain't right, man. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I gotta, I gotta get back in my bag. You were one of those guys, man, that you worked with all of these deaf artists, but you and Snoop never did do a song together. Oh man, Snoop, you. You you told me you read it, man. Come on. Oh my bad. It, it, my bad. <laughs> my bad. Nah. So what, what 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 was the what was what do you think? I know he had Nate to rely yeah. on for like you know a lot when of you when you kind of I, I don't know with Snoop. You kind of hear uh, the Dog Pound kind of talk about it. It's like you know they say they interviews about well, we had Nate and da da, da 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 da. I don't know if that that's what Snoop felt. Uh, I didn't feel like that because Nate and I don't sing the same no, at all at all like. And I'm not gonna even play with myself to play like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do two different things. Right. Um, Nate is the king Definitely. of what Nate Dog did. You know what I mean? Did and do. R.I.P. Um, to Nate. Yeah, that was a. R.I.P. to him. But uh, I just think that the, the time, you know, uh, there was two sides of Death Row at that time. And, you know, I was mostly close with Suge and Pac was around Suge. So that's who I work with. Didn't really get that opportunity to work with Snoop, but I, I look forward to that real soon. How was. Tupac and Suge's relationship at the end. This is a gloomy place for people. You know, how was it? Were they friends? Were they, were, was there a dilemma? Was there drama? Even Snoop, you hear all these stories. I've asked, I asked Kenya Ware, I've asked a lot of people I've interviewed about their relationship. You asked who? Uh, Kenya, Kenya Ware, Ware about, about, Pac? about Pac. She said None she, of them, all of them, when I, you know, what she say? She well, said that <laughs> she basically was saying that he was because she was around. Yeah, him. she was around. Right, she okay, said, "Okay, finish." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she just said she <laughs> basically would tell a story like you know she was she was there. Pac seen her before he passed away. He was in good spirits. Seen her where? At she was there that night at the fight. Okay, and her, her and Nate's uh, wife. Baby mama. Okay. Right. Yeah, uh, baby mama at the time may have been white, but she just she seemed like they was in a good place except for Snoop. She said Snoop was not in a good place with Pog when he passed. Okay, so is that about right? She knew that. Yeah, she yeah. told me that. I say she knew that. It's not what I. Actually oh, she said she. That's, that's what, what she, she told she us. So evidently, that's what she knew. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, you know. So was that not correct? I mean, again, you know. Um, we, I want to hear from your perspective. We had our sides, and. You know what I mean? Like, so when I hear a lot of people, and I'm not saying Pac was just privy to with Shug's people, but when I hear people saying things like, let's say, for instance, if Pac wasn't getting along with Shug, so to say, she wouldn't have known that. Okay. Why? Because her baby daddy wouldn't have known that. Snoop wouldn't have known that. That's real, cause that's because that's he dad. Hang, because he's hanging with bloods, right? So Pac's not going to go over there and talk over there mm. to to dads and corrupt and they baby mamas and it was probably something that it probably everybody was feeling. You know, something wow. going on. You know, like I grew up and figured that something was going on with my money and you know, yeah. maybe Snoop and all of those guys figured that as well or Pac may have figured that out. 
but to for people to talk like they were in the click of. Mm. I get it. The only people I think are privy to that is like the outlaws. Yeah, I'm not even privy to knowing what, because Pac wouldn't have said nothing bad about Suge in front of me. Correct. That makes sense. Why would he? Because I would. Because it would have been a problem. I would have mm-hmm. told him. Period. Motherfucking point blank. You would have told him. Fucking yeah. Like at that time, Suge would have known this nigga ain't happy. Cause you loyal. No, nigga, we nigga, why you ain't happy? Those are the kind of meetings we had. What <laughs> nigga? He had like, guardianship you know over him, yeah. so they had like, a close relationship. So that was a hell of a thing. That was yeah, an intense meeting. Yeah. Give mean, me a I give mean, me a know, story on some of the meetings. You just I'm got me saying, thinking you know, now. Our, our red room meetings and our death row. Meetings. What the hell was y'all doing in these meetings, when, Danny boy? Things, if, if things and, and you know if something didn't go right on Snoop Snoop them side or you know on Suge them side, you know Snoop was the one to fix it. And Snoop people was the ones to fix it. They had OGs that fixed it. You know, it wasn't like a bunch of bloods is gonna beat on these crips and these crips gonna beat on these bloods. It was organized, it was organized shit. Like the homies checking the homies. Mm. Wow. You know what I mean? And and when, when things wasn't right, we would sit in a room and you know we would pull those things right as men. But everybody knew what death row was about. It wasn't we wasn't men that was you know meeting in a corporate office. Ooh, these was niggas exactly meeting in the office. You know about millions and. Millions of dollars and dreams, and, and and it turned out to be some brilliant niggas that I had to be in that room because that work showed it. What was the last thing you said to Pop? And what was the last thing? You said? What was y'all conversation like? Damn. Uh, we had our last conversation. I would say, I mean, you know, us talking was maybe the set of toss it up. Okay. That was the last video that we. Whoa. Did. And I wasn't happy with Pop. Because of that video. No, his ass showed up late. Oh, that one. They just want to scrap the video. This is my time to get my solo on your ass. We, we here five Is he always late anyway? the latest person Yeah, I was about to say. Like, so what was that like? Like The energy, that that, that was a big, that was a, that was a nice video. Oh, man, that man, they told us if he's not here in the next 30, 40 minutes, we're going to scrap it. Big budgets on these videos. Man, you know, that time people spending three, four hundred thousand, maybe seven, eight hundred thousand dollars yeah, on video. close to a million dollars on video. Pac ass come wobbling his George Jefferson walk up in that. <laughs> I'm looking at him like, man, what the fuck? What did you say? Yeah, I always say something. Me and Pac always had like, you know, words. Like, and I don't even know if they were true words. <laughs> this was words. Yeah, I, whatever I said, shut up, Nettie boy. You, you, you a shorty, you a kid. Like, a kid. <laughs> You were serious about the ground, man. Man, man, I was super serious about this. I'm finna do my video. (laughs) uh, JoJo and Casey here, they got this fire in this tight ass suit. Nigga, you should have been there. You thought he would (laughs) have learned the slip and slide video. He was sitting there like he enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? That was was, was, was out the country. That was out the country. Everybody, you know. Everybody was happy. Everybody happy. They flew everybody out on my damn budget. (laughs) Man, that's crazy, man. So I think, you know, like when I look at, you know, you, man. Everything that happened, even to Dre, when Dre left, like, how was that energy? They were calling, you know, uh, Pac say without a great gay ass Dre. Man. It was all kind of stuff Woo. saying, being said. You heard, the, you was there, so you know what was that I'm like? My head like a turtle. <laughs> what, what, you was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like I'm the straightest nigga in the room. <laughs> what was that like, man? Like that time period, man. Man, you talking about Dre? Uh, you know. It was funny, you know. What I mean? It was funny because the shit that popped was the best at, ant- at antagonizing people. But he just flipped like that, like they nah, were kicking I mean, it on know, California love and every yeah, and I, I that think, whole. I think he kind of felt Pac. Uh, uh, Pac kind of felt that Dre wasn't participating with, you know, the artists mm-hmm. as much, and you know, everybody should be working and nobody bigger than the next nigga around here, and, you know. And, and Dre was when even when Dre came to the studio, it was like, you know, the dean is here or. He was, you know was he arrogant and cocky. Quiet in the hallways. I don't know, but you had to. You should. You better act like he was arrogant and cocky because that's that's kind of only thing I kind of remember from Dre. Like you wasn't going. He, to he demanded that. Person. It was he real studio the, time shit when Dre came in the it's studio. About business, but he you was serious mean? too. You, you, I think. Of look at look at how he is now. I mean, man, that nigga was serious. And, and you know, in this in this B studio, this. Stooping his guys in there fighting pits. <laughs> for real, for real. In our studio, motherfuckers in there just smoking weed and standing on top of speakers. 
You know what I mean? That shit ain't happening when Drake comes to the studio. Hell no. You had that part in Straight Outta Compton. That's what I thought about, what what I thought about when he was saying that, where he came out and he was telling Suge, like, they were out there messing around or whatever, and he was like, man, he was trying to record. Was it Pac was in the inside yeah, the studio yeah. or whatever? Yeah, like, I got like, Pac in here. Yeah, he's like, y'all need to be quiet. Y'all out here messing around. That the, movie the, thing whatever. crazy. All that movie shit crazy. All that shit. That's acting shit. Yeah, I know he it. All of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't telling we're not going that. that far. Y'all be, we're not going that motherfucking far <laughs> with these movies. No, nah, I think, you Especially know. Like, all Eyes on Me movie. Oh, my God. Oh, it was crazy. Horrible movie. Why None you didn't it like it? Uh, I How don't much know who was talking about. They were making shit up every day. <laughs> Not even 5% the, of it was true. I mean, you know, it's hard for me to like how you make a movie and don't talk about Danny Boy in it. Mm. Like my homie made that they movie. They just wrote you like, out of it. Why would they write you out? Again, you know, Suge was being, uh, you know, blackballed. You That's know, right. Anything that kind of had anything to do with Suge or Which the resemblance you. of him. Mm. You know, I inherited a lot of his problems. Mm. And um, it's just still weird to be left out of the story. Like I would watch things um, even when working a job and, and, and anticipate on seeing my part or seeing what, you know, the little small part. Cause I don't, a lot of people be like, man, you didn't know Pac that long. It felt like forever. Yeah, but is But it the work of, that we've done and the things that we've done. It's a magnitude. You couldn't, it's a lot of people mm -hmm. that won't experience that in a lifetime. Do you think it's cause you from the west side of Chicago? And they was from L.A. And hey, half of them niggas ain't from L.A. Most of them wasn't. Because I know dads was all that. down in Oklahoma. I'm saying they be saying that. And they be like, hey, L.A., man, come on, bro. Where you from? They I'm just right. like you. I, I came from Chicago with a vision and a dream. Don't hold it against me. That's all. Your ass from Mississippi. You from Philly. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is we talking about? I'm from Chicago. <laughs> Which is hard. That's yeah, hard. and a, a real fucking city too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we oh, just yeah. as real as any other fucking city. Yeah, yeah. yeah so y'all started a lot probably, of stuff. Probably so. Probably uh, you know. Again, they, I, I think inheriting the problem from sure. But they be acting. They be acting like um, California harder than Chicago. Where no, certain not things everybody. Are you know, I just kind of. I, I kind of. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. To, it's kinda hard to, man, I done been to some places where the grass is so green, and you get your fucking head smacked in. Shot to move on. So I don't know. You know what I mean? I just. I guess that's why I'm blessed. I go places. You respect people. Mm -hmm. You respect. That's you respect. Real. I respect people because you just never know. You never know. A, a five year old kid can walk up to you and shoot your brain out, and mm -hmm. you can't. And you can't do nothing about so it. You kid to jump on. Yeah. So what you think? Just because you you bigger, you know. I don't. I don't think that there's no tougher. It's just that you know the respect, especially coming from death row. Um, you know, none of us want to. We. I didn't get as much as everybody else got. People got plaques and. You know, checks. I didn't get those checks and those plaques. So, you know, being a part of that story and not left out of it. So that's why I wrote my own book, Stranded on Death Row. Stranded on Death Row. I don't Row. need anybody to tell my story. You I tell it to myself. Thank yeah, you. I, I want to ask you about Michelle A. jumping from Suge to, well, from Dre to Suge. I want to know <laughs> how you was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ill, you know. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I want to know how how this happens. You know, how does this how does this happen, and how do you look at it? Like, damn, you, you know, said sexy red. <laughs> <laughs> you silly, for real. Oh, Jezebel. Oh, oh damn. So I'm I'm just giving history of. Um, she we, was not. We can go way back. Who was not what? Michelle. A Jezebel. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, we can go back. It's the spirit. The Jezebel that, spirit. That, that, that spirit that jumps on whatever. I mean, she, right. obviously she was, because, I mean, it was said that she messed with, I mean, we know she was with Dre. Then we don't know if she messed with Easy, Right? We don't know. Then, Pop. They and said, I don't know. Did you see him fighting at the studio, Dre? Did he hit her like that? No, nah, come on, man. No, i never seen that shit. But I wasn't around, right, I wasn't around, I wasn't around, you know, that part of it. But you know what I mean? I don't put nothing past these. We niggas. Like, <laughs> why we put shit? Money. Everybody. Young like, niggas everybody, with let's money. take away the money and the cameras and the fame. Your cousin. What's your cousin smack a motherfucking girl that he been with and she look like she just drunk and trying to fuck everybody in the studio? Possibly. Me? Possibly. Possibly not. I don't happen. put anything past her because of the character that she's shown us. Yeah. I mean, let's, we wasn't now, but shit. She went from Dre to Shug. Da da. <laughs> we, we and she to... didn't hide that in her movie because she, when she did a she movie, she, hide it. she, well, she, she couldn't hide it. She, she hid it a long time. 
She what? <laughs> she fucking you. She was shit. She hit it long. She hit it long enough. She, she hit it and, yeah. and and she was sneaking around. Is Me what he's and saying. I knew when she was sneaking when they were sneaking. You seen it all. Oh, every last bit of it. Every Damn. last bit of it. I was but surprised at how, how she made it sound like the reason why she did it is because of what Dre did to right? her. No. You know what? Because of how Dre treated her Please. and then he was that's there the so that's right the there. reason why. Oh, nice movie. <laughs> that's, that's the oh. movie right there. And let the butterflies out and now but let's she play. told her story. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, she yeah. don't want to be looked no. at like she got like 50, 70 bodies. She was, that, sneaking, you know? she was sneaking around with Suge. Dre was leaving. Dre didn't have a bag, right? Right? That's right. Because he didn't leave with no money, they mm -mm. said, right? That's, that. So she called herself going with the winner. Mm. But at that sure. time, but but it, but she portrayed, um, she portrayed him as being this man who was with all these different women while he was who? with her. Dre. Dre. So was Suge and everybody else. No, Mike. That's real. It's the business we in. That's she, hard what you just said. Yeah. So so you, you think about it, man. You when you look at the way that these things are are. When you look at the way that these things are happening, man, far as, you know, at the time when you're, on, you, when you're dealing with this, you're a young kid. You 16, 17, 15? No, 17. Yeah, about 16, 17. 16, 17. 17. I think that's, man, that's the hard part right there. Yeah. For you to be able to, you know, be in the mix of that. Boy, I, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall. You man, know what I I'm wish saying? I, I wish Boy, I you had, had fun. Camera. You had I fun. Swear to God. I've you had, had fun. I've had, uh, I, I've had the fun of my life, man. The most, the best fun of my life. You, and you, and I see why you was offended. And y'all called me on the phone. You, you called me on three way. Uh, we call, yeah, y'all called me. Uh, yeah. Malik had uh, basically. Let's talk about that. Yeah, a little bit. we gotta talk wanna, about wanna, that because yeah. that happened on my watch. Yeah. You know, on my show. Yeah, we was right. in Las Vegas, and I had really. I was trying to understand because I didn't. I, you know. I love Malik too. Talking to him, I ain't gonna lie. As far as the conversation, he dope the poem, the right, he, he, everything about him when he come to what he do, mm -hmm. hard. So, oh, he's okay? A, he's a poet. Let's talk about it, man. So you basically, the bullying part, that struck a nerve with you. A big nerve. And I didn't understand First off, why. First what, why? You no, know, I'm talking about, I didn't understand why because mm -hmm. I'm on the outside looking in. Right. But now that I hear your story. Can we state what was said? It was like he like, was being bullied, and, and that somebody basically, called him. Basically, you he he had to come down, and and really, you know, like so we'll straighten this out. Was, just like was, I straighten this out on the phone with his ass. Okay, let's talk Malik's about it. Malik's a poet, great poet, great poetry, great words. Has nothing to do with nobody I know from this city. Who's gonna call him? I don't know a nigga in this city that'll call them when they got a problem, unless they have a problem with writing or literature. That's one thing. I got to say this in his defense. Say, say when it. I looked up his stuff like I looked up yours, mm -hmm. it was this guy that came on the breakfast club and I cannot remember his name, but he spoke highly of the fact of he came to interview in Chicago. Okay. And when he did, Malik got all of the all of the gang members together. So everybody what? put all of the major Nobody players together. Nobody give a fuck. And Nobody give them, all of us can do that. All of y'all. I'm a gay nigga. And you could do Nigga, that. Nigga, I packed this motherfucking block up. That don't mean nothing. Wow. Now, I'm, I'm not negating away from what he did, but to say that, like, everybody I know, I'm for sure, is more powerful than the niggas he know. Wow. Period. Every nigga I know is more powerful than the niggas he think he know. Is that just... So I don't need him to call nobody for me. As a matter of fact, I don't know a nigga I need to call somebody for me. So I never needed a nigga call for sure. Shug's not around right now, man. You know my all time why I work? I work in a funeral home. Wow. Why well, I'm comfortable. When I say I'm comfortable, play it. I don't need nothing. I've never needed no nigga. Like I'm, I stand behind what I'm. That don't mean I'm tough. But I do know that when at the end of the day, when it's time to leave here, we all go in that back room in that cold room. That's right. And I, more than likely, I'll be dressing their ass before somebody be dressing me. Wow, man! I just like I said, the the way that the story because Suge he had gotten shot in the leg that even came out on my show. Yeah, he didn't shoot Suge. He didn't get man. Get out of here with that shit and trying to what? Like that's another goofy to me. Just like with this other thing, like who wants to be known for that? You better stop saying like the when he did that conversation. There's a lot of people I had to call to calm down some shit with him. Wow. Like so, if you want to be known for 
You know, these interviews is fun, and I get slack from stuff that I say. Yeah. You think niggas threaten me and say what they gonna do and all of that. But you gotta be careful what you saying about some real niggas. Damn, man, this Chicago. I've never needed a nigga to, I ain't never been bullied. And if I get bullied, I'm gonna let y'all know. I swear to God, I'm gonna tell everybody because I'm gonna, first I'm gonna tell them so when I go to court from blowing your brains out, at least I came, I'm gonna come out and play my whole shit. I'm gay, I'm scared. All of that. You tried to rape me and I killed you. Now you got me thinking <laughs> about yes, something. Man, you you listen, fuck along. I'm taking up here because <laughs> academics and Saucy Santana been into it. Man. And, and he cried because of Saucy, you know, applying the pressure on him. You know, far as uh, he, he's gay, Saucy is gay. And then Saucy is basically now kind of tormenting him, saying he'll rape him and all kind of stuff. No. Oh, wait a minute. Now, now my boy, my boy crying because yeah. he feel like, okay, he being bullied by now, he probably like, is. He probably is. And he, he can't say nothing it. back because he say the LGBTQ. Yeah, he can. Man, if he say right. something. Man, don't nobody care about that shit. Man, you a man. This man talking, man, go whoop that man ass. And you don't think they'll look at it no way. what they gonna do, man? That's your audience? Do you think he could whoop him? Probably not. <laughs> That's the embarrassment. That's you don't want to go out there and get whooped by a nigga with fingernails on. Makeup, man. That's a big nigga. That's a big, a big nigga. And so that's why. You, do you think that's why he crying? No disrespect. You know what I'm saying? No, do you like being called a nigga? It was, I don't want to be I messing up know. pronouns. I'm just saying. I'm all messed up with pronouns and shit. Like I don't do that, none of that shit. I don't know him like that, but I do know <laughs> nigga crying, man. I was tripping off that. I'm like, damn, man, he getting uh -huh. emotional about that, bro. Well, he probably just scared, man. When you scared, like, because... Again, I people say stuff about people all the time. What is he so, you know, because he say stuff about women. He talk about a lot of people. I would tie saucy ass up if I was him. As much as he talked about women, he better. He better say something back. He better say something back. Ain't nothing like getting closed down. If you're getting closed down by us, it ain't the LGBT shutting you down. That's it, Saucy Santana that's saucy shutting saucy you down. Santana shutting you down. Saucy. <laughs> Whoa, because Saucy, Saucy Santana, man, he done, he done made his boy. I guess he's seen academics coming like I'm for the hell of this nigga, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing, one thing, you know, you know, how he, hey, leave, leave him LGBT, leave, leave it alone, man. You don't, wanna, you don't want nobody be talking about you. If you want to be talked about and, and get into it with somebody, but that's and why then you got to remember, you got to remember too, right? Just because a person's gay doesn't mean like all my uncles and my brothers and my cousins and the niggas that killed, they not gay. <laughs> they're not gay at all, and they love me. So they ain't trying. So they're to hear not it. coming. They don't. They will come to a gay party and clean it out. They're not for the play <laughs> so about. Boy, they don't boy. care about nothing. No, not today at and not all. tomorrow. And I'm grateful for that. No, that's fair. I don't brag up, man. I think it's about how you treat people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Everything that I've said in interviews is my story. That's if you mad right. about how I talk and how I say it, flip the channel. That's real. That's what Kanye said. Fast forward. Fast forward. <laughs> I like Kanye. I do too. I like that. Nigga. I like that nigga a lot. And with social media, the way how it is right now, where everything is so in your face, because people are so addicted. As much as people, it's so funny. People will be watching these interviews and they don't like something that you say, and they're in the comments saying all this other stuff and whatever, but they refuse to get off of the channel and find something else. Oh yeah. Well, they, oh, well I love it. You know, it's it'd be more a lot of gay bashing with me where, you know, a bunch of straight guys do do well they say they straight. Well they do mm -hmm. a lot of bashing. Like who have you know, the only you shouldn't be worried about business that another man is doing. The only mm -hmm. person I know well, it's only only one person that's not gay that only have a right to do that. That's whack one hundred. I mean I guess <laughs> what? Where did that come from? What did you just oh, my say? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with whack one on it? Now we're saying the only person that can talk about like people lifestyle and it, like only this privy to do that. Nobody should be privy to do that. But black one hundred, he is. Why is he? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he? I don't know. He's the only one that could talk about gay people and who's gay in the industry and who's not. Really? I, yeah, I think he's a gay police. But <laughs> this dude is crazy. I love it. So I got to ask you about that. Come for to get you out of here. Uh, Jada and Jada wrote a book. Jada. You wrote, yeah, you Jada. wrote a book. Jada. You wrote a book and, you know, you put some things in there that was saucy. Why y'all ain't come get my book like y'all want to get her book? Though? Because she is really she's a, a liar. promo queen, though. Yeah, she she knows why you said she's a liar? Well, go ahead. I'm going to finish. Go ahead. She's a promo queen. Like, she basically, I think, it, in my opinion, I'm thinking it's all for the book. All of this stuff. I hadn't been with Will. Uh, I got alopecia and Tupac got it. You know, I want to hear, like. Is that, do that help you? 
<laughs> Shit, I got alopecia too. My album's out. Black like, Heart. <laughs> Velo all, all platforms. I got alopecia too. Shit, if it's gonna work, I got it too. Uh, so, so tell me, what did you think? Like, like when you when you seen her start talking about Pac wasn't her soulmate and she wasn't just, attracted to him. Hope, what was that? I hope because I do a lot of interviews mm-hmm. and. I'm just now getting the opportunity to be known for the music again. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, I just hope that I don't look how she looks. Yeah. Um, it's pitiful. It's distasteful. Uh, it's disgusting. Um, just as much as some rap shit that I hear. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us look up to Will Smith as a hero. You know what I mean? When it comes to sitcoms and the business mm-hmm. that he's done. And I just think that certain things, if that is, you know, it's their business. But yeah. keep some of that shit to yourself. You know what I mean? I think it's for attention. And I was with it all the way up until I think I seen her say she gave her pox ashes or something like that. Is. You know what? And you close to that situation. So what? What? We, I just yeah. don't know. I want. Why know. would she say that? And you I'd know, love to come to you, the red table just to see the time frame. Because I know the Pox ashes was separated and he shared and him. stuff like uh, that. So the said, last time I seen the, I was probably the outside of the person that delivered them, the second or third person to see his ashes. And I just don't know how they went from Suge to his mother. Uh, I, I think. One of the securities, maybe, to Jada. Hmm. That's heavy. That. That's heavy because I don't. Should probably gave her some Cuba and uh, said that that's cigars, what cigar ashes, <laughs> and gave it to her ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say. What kind? Of, okay, so what kind of relationship did she have with Tupac? That I don't know. Did she go get him out of jail? No. no. Why? She didn't have a million dollars. No, you don't think she had a yeah, million, she had a million dollars to spend for for him? I'm just saying she had it. She, she didn't have all these resources. I don't know. But you were around them, so you saw their relationship. I'm well, trying to see. I was see never around them. You were never. I around never seen Jada. I never together. seen them during this desperate. Never time. seen. seen you never seen them together. Never. Okay. That, I think everything she's talking about is Baltimore and before, and that, and that was and that and wasn't why a long didn't she time. go get him? It was just as long as me. Just yeah. like, I mean, she had the right to say because she knew him, but you know, all of this love. Where was everybody at when Pac was locked up? They weren't sitting across the street people, like you. A lot of people, a lot of people turned their backs on him. You know, sort of like the R. Kelly thing. Like when that light got shined on him, that he raped somebody. A lot of people left Pac alone. So I think those are the parts she should share in the story. Let's talk about that part. Those are parts that they should say, wow. this is where I was during that time. Mm-hmm. Don't try to fit yourself in during, you know, the good time. So do you feel like her and Will is going to be just totally, because I know they're separated according to the whole, you know, do you think this divorce is I don't know over what they with? Are. Will is, Will, whatever they got going on, she's good. She's good because she can say anything and, and, and will come out and he say that he love her. And, you know, that's I guess that's one thing, man. That's what love is about, too. You know what I mean? Like he said, no matter what, he support her. And, you know, good luck to him. Wouldn't be mine. Mm. She wouldn't do that shit. She wouldn't do that shit with me. I, I got I to gotta get him out Split of here. Head. It's over now. Yes. To this song. Wow. That whole stretch. Whoa. What's the difference, Danny Boy? I always ask these crazy right. questions. Like, what's the difference in that Danny Boy to that, to that yeah. this song guy? Yeah. It's over now, written and produced by Babyface. I'm grateful yeah. for that, obviously. Um, this around Death Row, you know, th- those are my growing years. You know what I mean? Finding myself mm-hmm. as an artist. And I, I knew that I could sing. Um, I, at that time, I guess I didn't know what to do with it or you know, when to put this chop here or there. So a lot of stuff that I probably hear when I was younger, I'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. I'm cringed by it. But um, the growth, I call it Death Row University Mm -hmm. first. I learned a lot from Death Row. And to take that and to get into master's classes, so to say, these struggles along the way. uh, I sing about things that I've went through or experienced that's close to me. Uh, this Black Heart album 
you know, just it means the same thing as the red emoji of a black uh, heart, or the red uh, emoji heart mean love. Uh, the black heart of my album is where I named it that, because uh, I believe in black love. Um, I, I don't believe that, you know, just out of living this life, everything isn't going to be great all the time. Wow. You know what I mean? Even in love ship, friendship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My, me and my best friend, we, we, we're not going to agree on be on the same page. Me and the love of my life, we're not going to be on the same page. The, the part is, is how do we make it through? How do we get to the next page wow. or to the next chapter? Wow. And, and to be able to sing about that now, uh, certain things I just wouldn't sing, like songs I wouldn't, even with rappers. I, I'm not a part of certain songs I'm not done that already. Um, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the gift that God has left me with and sustained. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty careful on how I use it. And, mm -hmm. and with that, um, over the last year from releasing the album, uh, I made it to top 10 on the billboard. Yeah, awesome. I seen that. Uh, man, congratulations, man. So how does that feel to be back in the mix uh, like that, man? I uh, mean, to, to, to be forgotten for so long. And, uh, man, I, it's, it's overwhelming when I'm out in the crowd and I'm singing the song sometimes and I see people singing the words to it. Wow. You know, to know that, wow, I'm, they're finally paying attention to me. Uh, you know, I, I had that little... F f Five, 50, five to 15 seconds on AM Attitude and to get that attention at two minute and 30 second attention is amazing and to hear it on the radio and we just dropped another single called Just Friends uh. from the album and um, I'm getting a lot of love so mm. I'm just you know still not where because I'll be like oh my god when the promoters gonna start calling I'm ready to sing and ready to go out yeah. so I'm, I'm still waiting for a, a lot of those parts to connect but I'm grateful um, for so many years to have passed and to still be able to, you know, I feel fresh. Wow. You know what I mean? I feel like I could sing. I have the energy, and uh, I'm ready to do it. So thank you so much. Man. I have one last question. It yes. ain't gonna be the last because I got my Go ahead. <laughs> R and B because you know people. Some people say R and B is dead, right? Yeah. Um, do you think R and B? Because growing up in the '90s, all of that R and B was like to me the peak, like. I love yes. R&B. Yes. Will R&B ever come back to that point like what it was? I know Psycho goes around and come back again. Do you think it's going to ever come back? Uh, and yes. And when? What I, will it take? I think that we're on the right track uh, with R&B coming back. Uh, it's definitely on the, on, on the uprise. Um, on, and, and, and I guess, well, I'll say it like this, uh, the worse, unfortunately, the worse off that we are in the world, it seemed better for R and B than gospel uh -huh. because people need that healing. In mm -hmm. R and B music and soul music, blues uh, have and gospel has always served as a as a piece of healing for people. You know, when people was working in the cotton field, there were songs that they sang to make them get to the next day. Uh, I'm sure the guy that's sitting in the cell, there's a song that he sang every day to help them count those calendar years. Um, I don't know if the happy birthday song would be as exciting if it was just a letter and not saying. Right. So for us to get back to that moment, we're going through so much in the world where, you know, that song is there's a lot of that healing. Wow. And a lot of people is searching for healing. And uh, I'm not saying that a rap song can give you that, a poetry can't give you that. But you got to go to one of them Luther records or the Marvin Gaye records. Man. When you deep hurt in love, mm -hmm. you go to those records. You said something that I laughed about when you said that Suge Knight said you should have been and came out. Yeah. And if you had a came out and did some of the things that he told you to do, you would really blow You'd up. Been, he told, he's, like, he's like, man, see, you bullshit. See, you let Lil Nas take your shit. <laughs> I'm on the phone. I'm thinking he's going to be mad. He's like, man, Lil Nas took your shit. You supposed That's to come out. funny. He's like, I'm gonna tell you what you should do, though. <laughs> Shug's always a planner, That's man. That's hard, uh, man. I, 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 I um, speak with him every now and then. Uh, yeah, that's my, cool. My phone line is open to him. That's good. Forever and a day. That's and, that, and how so is that, he doing in there? He in jail. I he know. He is in jail. That's. Crazy. I think he's comfortable. That's what I was trying you know, to see. You know, he might be comfortable. He's doing a podcast or something. Got a podcast going. He's probably. How can you have a podcast? He's got a podcast going. He was on TMZ the yeah. other day. Really? Call calls. Yeah. Uh, have you been on this podcast yet? Not yet. He's going to have to pay me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you 
have to pay me. Podcast. And he man. really got to pay me. Oh, man. He's, he, he definitely, but y'all loyal to one another, man. You was with him as a kid. Don't That's mean I won't get with Snoop Dogg. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Snoop. You, you'll rock out with the new Death Row? Man, I'm so excited about this Death Row thing, just the possibilities, because I feel like it's unfinished business. It's a place that, you know what I mean? I, I was there. And I, I, I definitely want to be home. That's home. Uh, I want to finish some. Un- I know some records that was left in the vault. Yeah. I can't. I would love to get in the vault. And, yeah. And uh, everybody knows Snoop is a part of everything. Top three, top three artists of all time, dead or alive. And Any we're getting genre. We're getting him out of here now. Mm. That's that's the wind down. Donny, Donny Hathaway. Okay. Can you say Donny Hathaway? That's my. Give man. me something, man. <clears throat> For all we know. We may never meet again, but before you go, make this moment, can you make it sweet again? We won't say good night. Man, you so oh. talented, bro. Thank you. God, dog, Thank man. You. God, done bless you, man. Yes, Where did you get that time from? Your mom, your dad? Uh, so my mother, my mother was a singer. Boy, and she was. said poetry. And I just think that uh, God left me with the responsibility of the talent. Uh, yeah. So I have her voice and my aunties. I come from a singing family, so you God killed God. that, bro. Oh, Give wow. me the second this is one, strength. bro. I the gotta get the second one. That, 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 that made me forget Thank about you. my top three. <laughs> but we coming back. Okay. I need the next one, so, number two. So Donnie Hathaway, um, you killed Stokely that. Williams of Stokely Mick, Williams. of Mick Condition. That boy bad. Oh my God, that's that's my mentor. That's like who I look up to. That's the one that said we fell in Pre- love. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, from yeah, the yeah, yeah, that nigga that. bad. Negro, that's See, Negro I went man. to their concert one time, so I, I was hurt behind that concert. I was, I was, I was with you. I, I, you went. You it was really because no. of the. It was the music, so, so man. Can I tell you no. what? I the man. I think too, no. You know, he's a musician. Uh, a, a musician's musician, so yeah. to say. Like he's like for another artist. Like you'll probably just be crazy in there. But then I've been in the in the concert and I seen some of the stuff, and I'm like, wow. Only a musician would sit here mm. for it. It's like it's too musical and man, too musical. But went pretty brown eyes and that was cold. Oh, yeah, on. I like that. One of my that. favorite. What kid. kind of man? I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason that night, Kim clowned that night with me. That's the thing because I love Kim. Kim, Kim a beast, my, man. Well, that, that night, yeah, he can tell, he tell a story. I like it, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was just He's too. So talented. And, and who, I think with Charlie Wilson was and there Charlie too. Wilson. Oh wow. So it was a wild blend. I love me Charlie Wilson. Oh wow, man. So my last one. So we got Stokely of McIndition. Uh, Donny Hathaway. Who's that last one? I always and Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Oh Wonder. yeah, you the a daddy, true musician, the daddy of music. You've you met him. True, uh, I met him once, but um, I met him once when I first signed to Death Row. But since I released this single, he showed me a lot of love. Uh, shout out to the station awesome. in, in, in LA. Wow. And uh, I was calling into the station to speak with someone on the radio, and she was like, um, "He a voice is something." He's like, "Man." This song, man, this song is incredible. And I'm like, thank you so much. And da, 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 da. and the lady was like, uh, that's Mr. Stevie Wonder. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 wait, whoa. <laughs> now. Yeah. And he talked on the interview, on the phone with me for about 10, 15 minutes. That's awesome. That's hard, it was just to, just to hear the stuff that he was saying. Thank about you, Danny. That probably made, that's, ooh. It made me want to sing much longer. Yeah. So y'all got to deal with me. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, what did you sing to Jim Iveen when you t- sung to him? Uh, that was a song that was called, um, Drive by. What made you sing that song? I just you ain't got to. So, sing so it. no, that was one of the songs that I, when I was going because I was there to meet with another label. Okay. And we had a, a series of songs put together for the auditions. Okay. And that was one of the first songs I actually sang it for Suge first. And he's like, wait a minute, wait, 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 shit, hold up. He's but before I sang, he knew I was going to meet. And he's like, bust something. He thought I was gonna rap. And I sang, and he was like, hold up, shut up. 
Went out the room and he came back in with the little short white guy and it was Jimmy. Jimmy Iveen. Mm. I always wonder. Jimmy Iveen had them deep pockets too. He yeah, still got them. Them got boys, him. them boys, serious man. Do you yes. still you you don't even talk to him I, no more? I haven't talked to Jimmy in some years. Boy, that would be an interesting conversation. It would, yeah, it would be. And for you to sing for Jimmy Iveen, it's like he was the rock and roll dude. Wasn't he, was, he was the yes. one that ushered that in, uh, yep. in, right? Yep. That's crazy. Man. Out of all your songs that you have, which one is your favorite song? I gotta say right now for my album right now the Black Heart album it's, it's called, always it's, that called is hard. it's called Crazy why is that one your favorite what like you know um, like who ain't been crazy and in love that's right been through do, through some things and yeah, I'm a Scorpio too so it tells my yeah, whole story yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it tells my yeah, whole story you're a good guy man thank for you show, man. thank you Thanks. so much for coming on the show shout out how can people that's get a hold of you man how you. can people get a hold of you if they trying to link you, up with oh, Danny Boy y'all yeah, can find me get all in my business on Instagram <laughs> that's Danny Boy Stewart I'm always on there um, you can fa follow me on Facebook which is Danny Stewart and, if, mm. and to follow everything just go onto your website and search goldannyboy.com I'm gonna tell Go you so. compliment really is the fact that I didn't have to tell him to scoot up he's used to this I'm oh, so wow. happy how you <laughs> handled yourself <laughs> in this area I, I was talking about that before you got home right. oh, wow. people be on my nerves <laughs> They'll be on cool rappers. I'm like, man, why don't you set up? You had, you got this figured out. I, oh, well, thank I'm gonna be, you, man. I got to find your show. You well, know, thank you, I got to check it out, you know, do, like yeah. whenever you're doing your... I, I have a radio station. It's called FMP, and it's an internet radio station. So we're still building it up. And, so uh, we'll talk, man. Maybe y'all can come do a segment. Gotta come with sit us down with you. Yeah, 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 either we can do, do a virtual. Talk one of y'all. Yeah, y'all yeah, can do something. One, we'll holler. Let's talk. Okay. Check Get in, some man. of the news. Check in with me. Thank you boss so much, up. man. Boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a boss's talk. And we out. Man.